All right, everybody, welcome back. I uh, thought I'd just do this video. I haven't done a video in a while. I thought I'd go over some changes that I've made and some plans for the future. Um, first thing you might notice is now I have four separate switches. Um, I did a little bit of experimenting and uh, found that having four separate controls instead of one in the front, one in the back, drastically reduced the body roll. So I decided to make that change and um, that's been working out really well. The only downside of that is now there is uh, nothing to measure the tank gauge, which not super critical. Um, it's kind of nice to know when, uh, when uh, the compressor is about to kick off um, by knowing the tank pressure. Um, so now this gauge just reads out the four corners of bag pressure. Um, another change is I moved this, uh, the on the fly controller uh, from the side over here to it here in the middle of the dash. And that was largely because I found myself messing with the dials more frequently than I expected. That's kind of what the plan is here. I've got some ideas for what I want to do with this um, dash going forward, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait till next winter to do anything else uh, in terms of just being more uh, finished and where everything's going. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking about doing a whole row for the switches up here. So moving these up here, uh, doing all the gauges and the OTF down here. Um, but really what I want to do this summer is just kind of focus on how functional everything is in the layout of where it's at um, and then kind of go from there. So get some real, real seat time behind, you know, do I adjust the radio a lot? Do I turn the compressor off a lot? You know, what, what switches am I going to? What switches are my passengers going to? to you know optimize the layout um, the other change here is i got this ssv works uh single switch uh head unit i didn't like the previous head unit um it it didn't sync up to my phone fast enough it had a lot of functionality a lot of modes and options that i was never going to use this ssv works um it it syncs up to my Bluetooth really fast. The music starts playing really quick. So that's really what I was going for. I was having to switch modes always with the other head unit. And that was just kind of irritating. Uh, the only thing, the only downside about this SSV works is um, it doesn't have any bass or treble control. So these speakers are a little bit smaller. So if I play any sort of music with any sort of bass to it, um, I run into some bottoming out with these speakers. So I think I'm going to have to get a... Uh, low frequency blocker on the speakers, maybe somewhere in the 150 hertz, 120 hertz range maybe, um, to kind of eliminate that bottoming out sound. Um, but other than that, I'm really happy with it. I, I went with this over uh, the wet sounds and others uh, because it has a rotary knob. I prefer rotary uh, volume control. Uh, so that's why I went with that one as well. Uh, you might see next to it, this is the wet sounds uh, LED controller. Um, this is my second one. The first one ended up having a bit of a an issue. Uh, I don't have the battery on, so that's not going to help you. Uh, right now, just the speakers are hooked up. Um, but uh, in the future, I'm going to do the underglow lighting as well as going to be linked up to the speakers, so all that will be synced. Uh, I think I might get a second one of these and do uh, an independent uh, string around the roof towards the inside just to kind of illuminate in the dark. Uh, and that's really so I can run two different colors. Um, so underneath can be flashing, uh, some sort of other color, while above can just be a, a very neutral kind of, you know, off-white, uh, dim white, just to kind of help me see the controls uh, when driving around at night. Um, so that's the reason for doing two of those. Um, the only problem or issue I have with this one, I really wanted something that would change or go to the beat of music. Um, I've seen several controllers that have audio inputs. Um, but this one doesn't, though it still claims to um, change change the lights to, to the beat of the music. However, I haven't been able to figure out how that actually works. If there's some sort of vibration sensor, <clears throat> excuse me, vibration sensor inside it. Um, even when I, you know, smack my fists on the dash, it doesn't really change the lights with, you know, me hitting the dash. So I don't really know how it's picking up dancing to the music other than it's just playing randomly. Um, so I don't think there's anything else new up here. Um, I'm going to, oh, if there's, I think I'm going to make one of these a garage door opener. I found, I think Genie makes it. I don't know if it's going to work with my LiftMaster, so maybe that might be a moot point. Um, but we'll see. Um, it would be nice to have a, a garage door opener built in. 
Um, I think that would look nice, but I don't think there's anything else I planned on doing with um, this switch plate here other than maybe moving this switch over to here if I did a full bank of switches across the top um, and then putting the key switch over here I'd have a, a big plate made up that would hold everything um, but yeah that's what we've got here I'll take you down below here in a second and show you some of the plans for uh, what we've got going on um, with the underside of the suspension um, also we just did the Jake's disc brake install over here you can see uh, I think the brakes are going to need to be bled because they are not uh, you know, fully stopping um, if I jack the front of the cart up they still turn even with the parking brake on so um, there's still a little bit of work to do there I think they just need to be bled um, so yep yeah, that's uh those went in pretty well um, but yeah let's uh, move down below the cart here all right, so here we are up underneath the cart. Uh, you can see here, you know, I've I pointed this out in previous videos, where we just have just the cut leaf springs with the lowering block, uh, stock brake lines. Uh, I think what's going to have to happen here on this side, so my goal is to replace this, uh, this, this flat leaf spring with a piece of square tube. Um, and then... Um, I don't know, probably notch it out. Uh, we'll see how everything has to work um, here uh, with mounting the axle to the square tube. Um, this brake line here is probably going to get uh, routed out the outside and then back to the wheel. Um, for this side, this brake line is probably going to get replaced with a shuttle cart brake line because it will have to come around a little bit, similar to the other side, and come back in this side because there's no way it's going to clear any sort of square tubing right here so i'll have to get a longer one to run it around the outside edge there uh, you can see maybe if i'm able to step far enough back it's kind of hard to see but it is really not centered up um, and i attribute a lot of that to these bushings here being probably pretty worn uh, on both sides so i'm hoping with at least with the changes that I have to getting the square tube in here um, and the new bushings and everything up there in the front, that it might straighten it out. Now, if it doesn't, or if I'm still getting a lot of sway from side to side, I'm gonna have to figure out a pan hard bar solution. I uh, thought I had one figured out, didn't really like how it went. So we will have to see what happens after I order those um, rear suspension parts. Uh, and what it looks like once I get it bolted together.